gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears. Today we have a very special guest episode. We're joined by Canadian comedian living in New York, Ryan Long. He's really, really funny, makes some great shit. He's uh, blowing up at the moment on YouTube and Instagram. His sketches are awesome. He goes around fucking harassing people in New York. It's man on the street stuff. You know, I love that shit. I'm all about it. He's really, really great. I really recommend you check him out. And uh, this chat was really funny, really awesome, and uh, I truly enjoyed it. Before we get into it, my U2's figure drops July 31 at U2's.com. Uh, I'm going to talk more about the figure in the next episode, but, uh, you know, this thing, I'm super proud of it, comes out July 31, U2's.com, and it's very, very limited supply, so make sure you do not miss the drop. It's going to be going quick. You know me, I love figures, so does the fan base, so this is going to go quick, all right? Now, let's get into the podcast with Ryan Long. Hope you guys enjoy it as much as I did. Okay, welcome to the show, Ryan Long. Mate, thanks for joining us. Fellas, in the building. Fuck yeah. How have you been? Pretty good. Things things are cooling down a little bit. They were pretty uh, pretty hyped up in New York City for a little bit. There was <laughs> a riot outside of my house every day. Yeah, now it's dude. Just, now it's sort of back to normal. Uh, we like have time the, uh, to move there, huh? Oh, it's ridiculous. I moved to America to do stand-up comedy, and then I got to do that for about four months. Then they shut down stand-up comedy and locked us in our houses. So impeccable timing. Yeah, dude. That's, uh, that's, that's nuts because I, I almost went, and then, uh, and then corona started happening, and then I saw, oh, fuck, cheap flights to New York. Maybe I should book. Thank fuck I didn't. I know there was a moment where, you know, my buddy flew to Miami for a hundred bucks. It was, they were given the flights away, but then they went back and they were like, okay, these are going to be expensive again. I was trying to go to Canada for a little bit, but they, they have these mandatory quarantines and you don't really have to follow them. But the problem is if you try to get back on a plane. So if I go there right now, I have to stay for like three weeks and I don't want to do that. So I don't know. Yeah, that's what's happened in Australia too. If you uh, if you fly here, you have to stay in a hotel for two weeks, and you have to pay for that hotel. And like that's that's everyone's travel budget gone just in quarantine. Oh. Well, that's taking it seriously because for us, it's like the honor system. It seems like here they're like even state to state, they made a thing. They go, if you come back through another state, you got to stay in for two weeks inside your house. And if you don't, we give you in Canada the ticket was five hundred thousand dollars or something crazy. But you're also you're like one person's gotten a ticket they're not going to check you can't do anything but if you go to the airport they can look at the thing and be like okay well you just got here so obviously you didn't quarantine round them up boys yeah it's uh it is really it's really weird seeing how all the different countries are handling it like the, the united states is lost and you know what i'm all for that all right they fucked it they dropped the ball and it's time to give up i think for them yeah they just they they um they opened up a bunch of places and then they closed them back up, which is so disheartening for everybody. Yeah. So they, so they, they reclosed shit down. I think that's actually going to happen in Victoria. So we just went out of lockdown a little bit, but still with some rules, but everyone in Victoria where I'm from, uh, were just like, I think a lot of, uh, a lot of people for Ramadan were like, man, fuck quarantine i'm hungry let's eat and they got all of the massive families together and now we've had like a huge oh, yeah. second spike and now the premier's talking about locking us back down which is uh very shit so depressing it's like a girl that says you can come back to her house to smash then she calls and then she gets in a fight with her ex-boyfriend on her text on the way home <laughs> <laughs> it really is man um so what's what's being the last time we talked you were talking about how crazy corona was uh and that's on ryan and then, the, podcast, and then this Boys happened cast. Yeah, so now it's the, the Black Lives Matter protest or riots, depending on whether you listen to CNN or Fox. What's actually happening there? Yeah, I can tell you. Well, I'll tell you, it's it's calmed down a little bit. Now, it's just there's a couple guys trickling around outside of the house. And uh, I was walking with my chick, and we walked by, and this black guy yells. He goes, he's like a guy that sells junk on the streets and stuff. And he goes, yeah, you fucking give a shit about Black Lives Matter? Well, then suck my dick. If you care about Black Lives Matter, suck my dick. And she's like, I mean, I do, but I don't think I'm going to do that. Uh <laughs> 
I don't know if it's confirmed that counts as me caring, but I, I actually went to like a few of them, right? It's, yeah. it's both things, you know? That's why the CNN goes, it's this, and Fox News goes, it's this. And the truth is, it was both. Some of the yeah. protests, it's people, you know, basically singing Kumbaya and all that kind of stuff, and, and it's very peaceful. And then I went to the night ones, and it's friggin', uh, you know, like pa pandemonium. So yeah. the one, they were, everyone was smashing windows. And then on, even in that, if you talk, listen to Fox News, they'll be like, it was all, uh, you know, black people. And if you listen to CNN, it's like Antifa. And it was both. So the, so what would happen I mean, was, that's equality. Like, that's what they're fighting for, isn't it? You know, protesting peacefully yeah. together and rioting together. You know, that's everyone coming together <laughs> to for peace or to smash stuff. As long as it's all races, it's, I'm all for it. Yeah, I saw some crazy shit. There was a, one of my favorites was there was this black dude. He broke into a, broke the uh, window from a shoe store and then everyone piles in and he came out with a pair of shoes and he yelled, these kicks is for George Floyd. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I'm sure Nike like, would stand amazing. by that. Yeah, there was, um, then there was a lot of, there was some Antifa girls that were, they were, you know, had dreadlocks, the whole thing. And they were sort of running, trying to take over the parade, like basically yeah. going, okay, we're going to take a turn up here. We're going to go left on this street. And you could see all the black people be like, yeah, we'll do kind of whatever we feel like right now. <laughs> yeah. And they were sort of really trying to turn time it into... for white women to take over. Is it like this, like white no, ladies need were, to take a step it. back. I know it's very difficult for all the white ladies out there, but this isn't actually your thing. So it's time to have a breather. They're having trouble with that right now, you know, removing themselves yeah. from this movement. But there was, uh, so they were trying to take over and she, you know, bossing everyone around. And the funny part about those types is they were kind of yelling capitalism sucks. I actually made a video about this, but it was basically, they'd be like, fuck capitalism. And they're doing all this stuff. And the, you could see all the black people be like, yeah, I mean, this is kind of about Black Lives Matter right now, but <laughs> yeah, just I, every so protest is about capitalism sucks. It really is like, it's, it's such a weird thing where every every movement now because it's you know what it is it's in that idea of intersectionality fucked it where instead yeah. of everyone being able to focus on their movement which is how shit gets done like feminist women got the vote by asking for women to get the vote they didn't ask for seventy thousand things at once when you start doing that yes. every movement just dies because no one knows the people who 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 you need the thing from don't know what they're asking and the people who need a bunch of things are fighting each other while asking for 70,000 things. It's, it's just not right. clear at all. Well, it's like you walk into your office and you're asking your boss for a raise and then you slip him a piece of paper that says you also want to hire more bathroom breaks and you'd like them to change the mm. decor in the lunchroom. And it's like, what are we doing here? I was sort of saying that, uh, cause there was all this trans lives matter stuff, a lot of that going on. And I was yeah. saying that trans lives matter is sort of like the woke all lives matter. Yeah, it fucking it, you know, is. It's like, this, it's yeah. like, yes, you guys are right, but but this is not your thing at all. Yeah, I have so much more respect for uh, movements when they're not intersectional. Like exactly what you said. You know, see a feminist publication, and they're all about girl power and this and that. And then yeah. as soon as they're like, we're about gay stuff and we're about this. That's why you know one of the problems with the Black Lives Matter thing is they have a mandate, and all of it's about the LGBT thing. And a lot of black people are like. Yo, what the fuck is this? Like, what are you, what are we talking about here? We're talking about yeah. trying to have police reform and they're like, and also, you know, trans bathrooms. And they're like, okay, this is not what we're doing right now. Police can't do that. Like that's a, that's a fucking government thing. <laughs> it's like, if you start yelling about at the cops about what to, where to put a trans bathroom, they're going to be like, ah, oh, dude, I'm not a plumber. And I'm not even sure if that's a plumber's job. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. So the thing, it just gets, it makes every, I was actually thinking about doing something about this, but like the idea is to make every movement about everything at once, how to, how to yeah. convolute your movement. So no one can listen. The same as your girlfriend being, Hey, you know, we, I, uh, I'm not really happy in this relationship because I don't think you spend so much time with her. And then you do that. And she's like, also, I want you to uh, not hang out with these people. And also I'd like this. And also I'd like that. And eventually you're like, maybe we just don't get along. It sounds like <laughs> you just don't like me. Yeah. You know? So if you if we're at, people have to live together and that's what it is so and if people have demands i think most people were kind of on board with the police brutality thing and then when it came about you know taking down statues and, and it doesn't even matter yeah. if these things are right or wrong it was just it just it, whether or not you feel like it if someone comes at you with 90 complaints about what they deem to be your side it just starts to feel like an all-encompassing attack against you and you just get defensive so that's kind of what happens from a fucking cultural standpoint
Yeah, it, it is it is an interesting thing of like because because I felt like the George Floyd thing was the first time I'd ever seen like a hundred percent of people go, Oh yeah, clearly that's fucked and there's there is no yeah. more context needed. Like it, right wing, left wing, every if you're a police officer, everyone saw that and was like, Oh, clearly that's a fucking problem. We should fix this. And then that and then people started throwing in all of these other ideas that are up for debate. And they were like, no, you had the win. If you stayed in this corner, you would have yeah, 100% won. It. And now you throw in all of this other sh shit, which is, which you might be right, but it's still up to interpretation. Whereas this George Floyd thing definitely was not. And now it's, yeah, convoluted and weird. Yeah, you got you. They asked you to like one person, and then you're like, and you have to say you like 90 of his friends if you like him too. And you're like, well, I don't know. I thought we were talking about this one thing right now. So was, I don't know. I saw I saw was, a lot of this the, guy's friends smashing stuff. Are you are you sure I have to like yeah. them? It's like, well, you said you like this guy. I'm like, yeah, but he wasn't doing that. They kind of had a per the, the 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 police brutality thing really was a perfect thing to like bring people together because even if they say they go this is about black people and whatever and even if you're a person that's like well it's not it's just police are bad it's like all right well we still want the same thing anyway so even if yeah. we disagree on the reasons you should still support the thing that we need mm -hmm. police reform even if you're like one of those police stat guys that you're like actually they kill more white people whatever even if you think that okay even if that's your opinion that still doesn't change the fact that there needs to be police reform. <laughs> Yeah, that's 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 the funny thing of like it's like if if you're like a super right wing small government type person, police reform is surely what you should be after because, you know, the police is literally the government and how they enforce their rules. So if you're all for like a, against government tyranny and all this kind of shit, it's like that's what you should 100%. also agree with, surely. Yeah, it was one of the first times in history, but it, this this happens a lot right now, and it's it's because of what you said, intersectionality. It's like, and even when you saw it, also because the whole world, they don't really have leaders in these movements either, right? Yeah. You know, when you talk about the trans lives, like people try to present themselves as a leader, but really it's just the most radical person kind of becomes the loudest, and they kind of self-appoint the leaders, the Sean Kings of the world, that they're like, yeah. police brutality, and it take them three days to be like, we need to tear down every Jesus statue, and you're like, and, you're, and everyone's like, this is your leader. And they're like, well, kind of not. But also, yeah. I guess maybe he kind of is also a little bit too. You yeah, saw that with the, the Delia stuff too. With, um, as soon as it was, you know, it was kind of started with like, this guy's bad. And then yeah. within 24 hours, it was like, every man's bad. Uh, we need to clean up this culture and this and this. And everyone's just like, Delia's probably like, oh yeah, they're not even talking about me anymore. Sweet. <laughs> Oh yeah, and that that shit was like I uh, to clarify. I think what Delia was doing was creepy, but but only with the the actual creepy shit he was doing. When all of these women came forward, that to me looked like genuine victims, and he had actually done a wrong thing. Then all of a sudden, all these fucking eighteen to twenty four year old grown women started to be like, "Yeah, look, yeah. I messaged him first, and then he replied, and then we had consensual sex. <laughs> He's a monster." Have some water, bitch. This is not about you. <laughs> yeah, and they want you to read that. That's the best one. When they're like, this celebrity, you know, DM this 24-year-old, and then they met up and had sex, and you have to be like, ew, this is fucking yeah. creep. It I does. It, it, <laughs> yeah, when you see 10 of the things, and one of them's legitimate, and nine of them are outrageous. <laughs> yeah, and then that makes, that makes, like, everyone who's, like, so if you saw it early, you were like, oh, this guy's a monster. But if you saw it late, all you saw was all of these stories of like 18, 24 year old women having consensual sex. And, and it, all it would make the with new their person hero. do. Yeah, with their hero. And, and they go, well, I don't <laughs> see anything wrong with this because they literally, the legitimate shit got buried by the, the people piling into it. It was weird. There was some of the ones they were piling on there and uh, on Twitter that were like going viral. So, you know, it's obviously any anyone could cherry pick like some radical, yeah. super radical stance and be like, this is what they think, the like Tucker Carlson formula. But the, I'm talking about stuff that was, you know, everyone I know was posting it and it would be, pe some of them were like uh, this girl that was dating this guy and they were saying the like the money dynamic was, uh, 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 uneven like he was paying for everything so she was trapped in that way because he's paying for everything and i was oh. like i was how great would that be though if that did catch on where you go on a date with a girl and it's got to be 50 50 because you're like listen i'm not some rapist here that's going to be paying for more yeah. of the meal
I mean, <laughs> I e- everything is a power dynamic. Like, are you trying to tell me that hot no chicks don't have power? You know what I mean? Like I was talking about it on, on my podcast of like, if, if this means that if, if people with fame can only fuck other famous people, uh, that doesn't mean like that, that they're, what, what's going to happen to the ugly famous dudes, you know? Like they're not they just because they're famous doesn't mean they can fuck a model, you know. They still yeah. have to you know, there's not that many ugly famous women. There's a lot of ugly famous dudes. Can they yeah not fuck uh anyone then? Yeah, they're out of the game. Also it all sort of it, that sort of stems back to what you were saying too, with the with the white chicks like having a hard time with this, or we were saying, because yeah. they've made it's sort of like guys like you that are just crushing it on your own because you haven't been in the industry because they made it so unappealing. Like, and in addition yes. to the fact that if you have these, they don't want you to have these industry jobs. So they're almost impossible to get now people like you. And then on yeah. top of that, they sort of want to take away the benefit package where they're like, okay, also you can't have sex with like hot chicks anymore. Or you're in trouble. And it's kind of like with gladiators where you're like, this job's only good if you get to be the man after like, it's not the job. Isn't that great? Like a big part yeah. of why it rules is because you kind of get to be the man. So none of none of people are all starting their own things and not doing industry jobs. And there's so many people like you. So then when they start canceling and they're like, we want to take these people's jobs away. And you're like, what jobs? You were pretty yeah. adamant on we couldn't have them. And also we don't want them. So then on top of that, they're like, I guess we just have to cancel each other. And that's why you see some of these, you know, the Jimmy Kimmel's and the Fallon's yes. and all these, you know woke people going down because they don't have anything to take away. They try to cancel guys like Joey Diaz and Rogan. And they're like, cancel me from what? You're going to take away my RSS feed. What are you taking away? I know. Well, that's, that's that shit. It's like Joey Diaz has literally done prison time for kidnapping and robbery. And you're angry about jokes he told on a podcast. Like you, they, they don't compare. It's like either you're, you're going to say that he's unforgivable for the real crime that he's done. And by the way, atoned for and grown from, or you, or you're going to cancel him for fucking words. Like it doesn't make sense. When did, when did words become worse than literal actions? It's so weird right now. Yeah. That's, and also the pick and choose. That's why in one of my last videos, I kind of said that Mm. where, and and not that I have an opinion on this, but the Snoop Dogg thing, like if Snoop Dogg, if they if he said the like if he said called someone like a, a fag or something, he would be basically yeah. that might do him in. But he has hours and hours of him rapping about literally prostituting and beating women. Yes, <laughs> like, I was talking fine. about that the other day. Like, all a hundred percent of rap is guys. I mean, the only difference between what I'm about to say and them is that they do it while rhyming. It's like guys going, yeah, I have (laughs) literally murdered people. I have killed people and I will do it again. And if you fuck with me, I will kill you. And it's like, they're just rhyming that sentence. There's not much real difference. So it's like, if you're going to cancel comedians for, for jokes, why not rappers for uh, bragging about actions that they have literally done? Yeah, and if you were going to say that art's not exempt the same way that they're, you know, they're caught up a lot of times when you go comedy, they go, well, you're not exempt. Like what you say on stage doesn't, you can say like this is art or whatever. They go, no, it's like, okay, well then why does Ice Ice T get to play a a cop on a pro cop show? How is he not canceled? Like, why is that art exempt? Like, do you get to play a a cop, a cop now that's like a good cop? If you're like, well, how is that not exempt? You pick and choose what's exempt also. So it's funny. It it's is like, a funny an, time it's like an actor, stuff. an actor can pretend to be a Nazi, wear swastikas, say racist things, and that's fine. But if a comedian pretends to be a racist in a bit to critique racism, often that gets them in trouble. It's, it's, I very think it's because they own that space. If, if I was to guess why, it's because they kind of own that space a lot. And comedy's always been sort of run by a certain type of person, and especially yeah. from the industry. So they kind of have control over that, and they don't own that territory, you know, hip-hop territory. Because there's always yes. been sort of a struggle between, you know, who's more important on that hierarchy, like white chicks or black dudes. So they yeah. don't really have control of that. And then also, at the same time, if they start really uh, policing lyrics, they'll police what these celebrities say outside of the rap. But if they start policing the rap yeah. music, 
and when they start saying, oh, this guy said this and this guy said this, I think they'll come to have to realize that they've come full circle to being Christian mothers where they yes. don't like to see themselves as that. <laughs> but it's like, that's the only thing that separated themselves from the people trying to cancel ra- like lyrics from songs and, oh, this guy's talking about the devil, is if yeah, they start true. looking at rap and say he's that, there's, there is just a complete mirror of 30 years ago. So that's the only thing they could say. They're like, no, we actually still like rap. <laughs> it is really funny. It's like the criticisms are almost exactly the same. It's just who's saying it has changed. And like, it, oh, who yeah. knows? And in, it's not who's saying it has changed. It's how they present around. themselves. What? Yeah. That's also true. Yeah. It's, um, it's, yeah, it's, it's weird all bit. of these, all these comedians, like the, the mainstream comedians who get canceled. Because like, say you say something fucked, uh, you will get criticized for it. And that's, I suppose, fair enough. But what, what's interesting is when... Uh, a mainstream person does something like the the Jimmy shit wearing blackface and stuff. It's like he did that on Saturday Night Live. So that sketch probably wasn't written by him. I bet there were black writers in the room. That sketch was passed by executives, advertisers, lawyers, this, that, and the other. That blackface sketch would have had about 50 people go, yep, love that, that's great. But only one guy gets in trouble for it. That to me is weird. Oh, it's insane. And they, they, and to go backwards and you're like, okay, the answer isn't that like all these comedians were racist. It was like people just looked at blackface differently. It may be wrong, but that's yeah. just the way it was, obviously. Yeah. It wasn't clearly. that much of an edgy thing to do. Yeah, I know. But yeah, I, it's, it's, a, it's, also, it's very weird. I think one of the reasons why, too, in my opinion, is a lot of these guys, you know, the Patton Oswalds of the world, they kind of – one of the reasons they've sort of taken the role of being the cancelers is because of people like you again, where they essentially, you know, got popular doing edgy comedy. And that doesn't necessarily fit the case of Fallon, but a lot of these people, Camel and whatever, when he was, you know, I loved yeah. the stuff he was doing for a long time. And then now that they're in the, you know, elite circles or whatever you want to call it, they, they sort of have these new rules that you can't do that stuff. And the young people and the people that aren't beholden to networks and all these things, yeah. it's like they're competing against you with their hands tied behind their back because you're just doing what they were doing 10 years ago that they can't yeah. do it anymore. So they're like, well, they we're getting walked circles around by these guys. And it's like, okay, we need to shut this down. <laughs> these are these are our yes. competitors and they're demoing us. Especially I mean, yeah, now especially, when they don't have their studios. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. Like, like now they don't have their studios and they don't have their makeup and big writing rooms and teams and costumes and all that bullshit. It's like, essentially, all of these daily talk shows are now YouTube channels filmed from bedrooms. And like the average YouTuber, like it literally looks worse than like a 15 year old YouTuber's video who had a tutorial right. at 500 bucks. It not only does it look <laughs> worse, it's also less funny. Like all of these comedians are getting exposed uh, by themselves. Well, once you take away all of the magic, all the flashing lights, the audience, the sign that literally says applause, you're just a bad YouTuber. And taking away the like huge guests for the most part too. Yeah. You know, it's like you would look a lot more important right now with Jay-Z sitting beside you. Absolutely. <laughs> you know? have, have you been watching those being like, oh, I can, I'm crushing these guys. Cause their jokes don't yes. even like necessarily fit the format. Yeah. Well it's um, what, what I've been doing is I've just like, I've just started up my, um, my new satire desk show and like, I love that. Show, what's, yeah. Thank you, man. Yeah. What, what's, what's great about it is like, I, I, I'll write a few fuck jokes and, and just the idea of not having to run that by anyone immediately gives you the leg up over this, these corporate guys, because it's like, you know, maybe I want to make a joke about, uh, Ford being, uh, like a bunch of people from ISIS driving Fords. Right. If I'm spon- if my network's sponsored by Ford, that joke's out the window. Of course. I've um, there was the same thing with uh, when I was when I was working at uh, doing uh, my web series for CBC, the Canada Broadcast Corporation. Mm. I remember everything taking so long. It took like by season three, we had to get our scripts approved, our notes approved and then the edits. And then they would do like a second round of edits. And then that took so long that a new person got hired in a high position that now we had to go back after we did color correction and they got involved. But so it came out three and a half months later in a time when it was, you know, I was trying to be on the pulse. 
And I, it was literally yeah. such a, a, wake, a, a realization for me that when I finally went to release them again, when I was doing my final round of edits, I feel I felt like I needed to change the pacing of the edits because like the culture of the internet pacing had changed. It had been so long. Yeah, it's it it's like it's slow. That's it, it's like it really is the too many chefs uh, spoil the broth. You know, like too many people putting their hands in it, and then like if I'm doing a joke, I want to, I want to get feedback from another comedian when I wrote the joke and then my audience. And that's it. Like, why would I want some guy in a yeah. suit? Who's whose own goal? Like my goal is to create the funniest shit ever. The guy who's my boss, his only goal is to keep his job so he can keep paying off his mortgage. He's not creatively invested in what I'm making. And why should he be? He should just hold on to his job and that's his goal. And so why would I want to work with a guy like that? Have you ever been in those conversations where you're having a like uh, intellectual discussion of whether something's funny or not? And you're like, how about I just go on stage and check? <laughs> yeah. Like that's, that's like, that I, I can actually it. test this. <laughs> yeah. It's, it also, uh, it did also make the, the people who were good. Um, it, it, there were a few people that you, you stripped everything away and I was, still like this guy rules david spade was one of those because i was watching some of his monologues yeah. and he was just doing these stupid jokes to camera and post them on instagram and i was like take everything away from david spade and i was like this guy's still super fucking funny yeah yeah i like him he's uh i mean there's some people like that there's a reason why they've been around for so long uh i i, I really do like him it's um yeah i guess you know what it is it's the ultimate tell of like some of these talk show guys is like oh i can tell you haven't been doing you've only been doing your tv show you haven't been doing anything else you know you've just been showing yeah. up and reading the script and you can and when that's taken away you can kind of tell you know what i was thinking about too because i was I, I go back and forth on what i think of trevor noah because a part of me is kind of like i almost like write him off as like oh this guy's just doing whatever but then i watched him in a few interviews and i'm like he is actually a fairly intelligent guy and he, he's 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 clearly pretty funny and stuff like that. Yeah. But it was kind of thinking to me, I was watching this old clip where Jon Stewart used to go on and like argue against guys like Tucker Carlson and stuff like that. When yeah. Jon Stewart was kind of the man, you know, and I love and one him. Of the, he's so good. Yeah, he's so good. And I was kind of trying to, you know, dissect in my own head, what's the difference. And one thing that I really noticed is Jon Stewart was very big on going on these kind of places like Tucker Carlson to make fun of him. And then when they criticized him, he'd be like, what are you taking your credit? You're taking uh you're comparing your show to someone who comes on after crank yankers. You know, he'd kind of be able to say like, yeah, yeah. we're not the same thing. You idiot. Kind of probably yes. what you might do with vice or what I, and you are, that is, or what I'm doing is, and it is the same thing, it, but with Trevor Noah, it's hard for them to say that right now. Cause they're, they're kind of coming on and they're like, he kind of says, well, I'm just a comedian. And it's like, but that's not really what this is. Like you are part of the mainstream, yeah. like, uh, you are part of the news and the daily show is the news and you are influencing a million people's political opinions and you are part of the machine and you are, you know, obeying to opinions. And I think that a lot of times they probably do say things they don't believe because they have to, or give people softball questions because they need them to come on again and stuff like that. And I go, I think what happens is over time, those people come so embedded in the machine that they lose their ability to be like, Oh, I'm not part of this. And once you're not, once you yes. lose your ability to say you're not part of it, it's very hard to, uh, be great if that makes well, sense well yeah i think like i was taught when i w when i was last time i was in new york i talked about this that that exact thing with andrew schultz of like like he was saying because i was coming from it from an australian perspective we have like our culture is very much whoever is in charge no matter who they are what they believe we'll take the piss out of them because that's just you know we used to be a prison colony so the people in charge were the jail guards and all that shit so that's our yeah. culture of like you're in charge even though you're a you're a good guy you're still kind of my enemy because i'm wearing orange and you're wearing a badge like that's the yeah i love it. that's the culture of australia so i was talking with him about it he kind of had the perspective of like uh it seems like uh to really blow up you have to either go left wing or right wing and i was kind of saying I really, really think that especially with that culture of you must be one or the other, there's so, such a room for someone to come up and make fun of both sides uh, in a lighthearted way. Yeah. And, and that's, that's what he's doing. And, and that's the kind of what we were talking about. Um, 
and that's not what these shows are are doing you know like they're 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 just coming up and they're giving softball interviews like wh- when i saw fucking hillary clinton go on and they asked the jeffrey epstein question i was like Oh, she knew she was going to get that question. And that's the problem. Yeah, they go, we got to give you one. Yeah. And she's like, okay, you can ask the question, but that's it. I won't answer it. I'll just laugh. And that's what she did. And it's like, that to me was, was gross because they had a real opportunity to ask the question and then make fun of her, maybe even ask more. And it's like, either your comedy and you're going to make fun of both sides or you're part of the machine and you're just going softball and then, yeah, you're right. You're just not doing comedy. You're just giving those people what they want to hear. You become a soldier in a movement, right? And your propaganda. Yeah. Cause there, that was probably one of the most, uh, I don't know, toxic or wrong or whatever, whatever word you want to use. But when they, when people say that like comedy should have a purpose and stuff like that. So I might think that, but that comedy, you know, to be good probably needs to have some sort of, you know, target or some sort of perspective. But the idea that that's the reason for it is so funny yeah. because it, it it's like, yeah, you know who else thought that? The Nazis and the Christian church and the government. Like, yeah, the Chinese government thinks that, you know, all the, or the North Korean government thinks yeah. that art needs to, you know, support their leader. And it's like, once you are beholden to a movement that has tenants and you're making stuff, you're yeah. not really making anything honest. You're just making... Uh, advertisements for whatever your beliefs are propaganda yeah that's what that's what yeah, a propaganda. Lot of it is. and i think i think it's a good point about trevor i have a lot of respect for him because i can't shit on anyone who's like made it that far in america not being from there uh but yeah but i think that he is so smart and he genuinely does give a fuck about politics that much that his show is like it's like 50 50 and and, or or maybe even 60 40 news comedy and i feel like to really do news comedy it needs to be 70 percent comedy 30 percent informative without saying this is what you must think it's like you got to present both sides of the argument make fun of both sides maybe chuck in a little bit of what you think But at the end of the day, if you're sitting there as a comedian wearing a suit and tie going, this is what you must think, I can't respect it. It's a difference between comedy with an undertone of a message or a lecture that has some comedy in it. Yes, (laughs) definitely. Also, whenever I do, you know, I just did this one because a lot of people think that the other side, like everyone's, you know, on a side. And I go, you know, you do this, but I, I just made this video. Uh, making fun of like how CNN and Fox News does um, ha- does their news. And then literally, right. you know, that was one of my biggest videos and everyone liked it. And you see all these people being like, oh, uh, everyone's polarized. And you go, well, then why do they all like this then? Because most people aren't w- aren't radical on one side or the other. You just think that because yeah. they're not allowed to say that they're in the center because you've made it illegal to, you know, not be on a side or whatever. Right, go, that's going to be the dumbest shit was, was demonizing being in the center generally. Like, I guess being yeah. in the center on every issue, I can understand being weird because then you have no opinion. But to me, being like in the center generally is like, oh, I think... That guy has some good ideas. I like that, but I don't like what he says there. And this guy has some good ideas, but I don't like what he says there. And then you find common ground. Like if, if that's evil, the world's over. It is the world over when they make you say lies. That's what it is true. It's like, it's, they always, it's the vote or die thing, right? Where they go, everyone needs to vote. Voting's so important. And if a guy's like, all right, I'll vote for Trump. They're like, well, you can't do that. <laughs> we meant you have to vote for yeah. our guy. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of these CEOs and stuff, they go, these people need to speak up. And you're like, maybe they're, them being silent is what they're doing. Because if they speak up, you're not going to like what they have to say. They go, you know yeah. what? I disagree with this one, but I'll just stay out of it. How about that? And they're like, no, 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 you can't stay out of it. You actually need to speak and you need to say our stuff. You're like, well, I don't think those things. That was when the woke stuff really get out of control. Cause it's like with, with the, like, let's say a girl's not hot or whatever. I would never in a million years go up and a girl be like, you're fucking ugly or fat or whatever. You just wouldn't do that. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. But when they go, you you're they're like that girl this girl's 400 pounds they go she's hot right and you go 
you know, I'll just stay out of this. They go, no, say it. And you're like, yeah. I'm not saying she's hot. Like, I'll, yeah. I'll just not say anything. But you're like, no, you have to participate in this conversation and say she's hot. <laughs> no, it's like, yeah, it's like, I don't want an opinion on that issue. Because if I say she's ugly, <laughs> you're going to kill me. If I say she's hot, she's going to fuck me. And that might kill me. I die either way. <laughs> you get crushed. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, you know, I'm a skinny guy. I can't handle that. It, it is... It's, it's so funny when, when people like that, they're always putting on their Instagram stories like issues that they only started giving a fuck about six hours ago because they saw it on some other cunt story. And then they start yeah. posting all these stats and graphs that are pulled from who, know, who knows the fuck where. And they go, if you think this, then you need to educate yourself. And it's like, what? <laughs> educate myself with only your facts. What if I educate myself <laughs> and I try to get the whole picture and I find out, oh, actually, this is what's really happening. And then you call me fucking evil because i didn't use your fucking facts it's the world's yeah, so what if weird this guy man. educates <laughs> yeah what if this guy educates himself on the jews with mind comp like you got you don't yeah. get to choose where he educates himself from i know yeah that's that's literally what fucking nazis and shit say of like we need to educate people on the jews and it's like educate them how because they're just people but if we use your facts they're evil and need to die isn't it sort of a funny game of uh, almost Russian roulette right now with all yeah. these people? Because there's been a big thing with anyone who started posting, um, like really made Black Lives Matter thing their entire identity. Now mm -hmm. they've been posting a lot of things like, hey, this better not stop. Like just because it's been a week, like you better not forget. I don't want to see any of you guys post, yeah. you know, forgetting about this in a week and just let it become a fad. So now they're all like, okay, so how many times do I have to post a day? To, <laughs> and it's I a know. game of Russian roulette to like when they can go back to their normal lives. <laughs> it fucking is. It's like, and, and it's like the people that are saying that, it's like, bro, you stopped posting about fucking Yemen three weeks ago. What happened to that? Yeah. <laughs> There's been so much of that, though. It's people that I've seen that made it their entire identity. One funny one that I saw was she made it her entire identity, the Black Lives Matter. Like, all she posted yeah. for, you know, 10 posts yeah. a day, you know, and very scoldy. And then after a week, I remember she posted something along the lines of... Uh, is it okay to overdose on banana bread? And I was like, oh, we're back. And yeah. <laughs> okay, stop this talk. And what did we get here? That was uh, one week we had. <laughs> one week. There we go. Have you, it is fun. Have you seen in uh, Australia? Because I would assume there's some uh, something similar going on there that I'm watching in Canada. Because, you know, I live in America now, but I'm from yeah. Canada. But the um, in Canada... In a lot of other places, they sort of appropriate the Black Lives Matter thing, but they didn't yes. have it the same. So yes. one of the, some of the funniest ones was like, if you look at England, they go, uh, they're they were doing the hands up, don't shoot. And it's like, your cops don't have guns. <laughs> <laughs> That's so fucking true. I hadn't thought about that. I love the, the English movement because all of their chants, they sound so different from the American chants. Like, Everyone in America is going, Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter. And then in England, everyone's going, Black Lives Matter. Like they're really hitting that hard T. <laughs> Black Lives Matter in it. They're hitting the hard ER on matter. Yeah. <laughs> Black Lives Matter. Most of the chants were about getting their dick sucked. Like I felt like there was mm. so many of the chants that were like, NYPD suck our dicks. I would say yeah. at least three or four chants involving getting the getting your fellatio by the New York. And look, department. that's not that's not very uh, inclusive to women and men without penises, is it? So there's something that needs to be <laughs> checked up there. Yeah, you have guys yelling NYPD suck our dicks. Isn't that sexual harassment? You're going to force the female. Uh... <laughs> when Canada, one that was making me laugh so much is yeah. because one of the things in America they have is there's like an issue with the schools that a lot of it's paid by property taxes. So you have kind yeah. of places that are all black and their schools, the teachers get paid less and the, you know, the funding's not as good. So you have That's people weird to me. It is weird to have people in the same state. And you know, there's the problem is they both have their solution and they they're opposite mm. solutions. So probably either one of the solutions would work, whether you kind of remove the taxes and stop doing it that way, or you let people, you know, choose which school they are, even if they don't live close and they can take a bus or whatever. There's a, there's a yeah. bunch of legitimate solutions to that. But the funny part to me was in Canada that really caught on and people were like, we need to fund black schools. And I'm like, we don't have those. We I all know. went to the same schools. Like I grew up in Ajax, Ontario. 
we all went to the same schools. Like I, my schools, like half black. We didn't have these schools that were all minorities. I so, know. Yeah, we don't, they, yeah, and, we and don't really we have did, that in Australia no, yeah. either. And if we did have that, they still had the same funding. Like they didn't fund it. You mm. know, they didn't say like, oh, this black neighborhood, the teachers get paid less. Like teachers get paid what they get paid. So it's just so funny watching other countries just like appropriate the struggles of America or whatever. And and even, you know, from a, a most basic level, like the racism is different because everyone I knew, their parents weren't slave, And none of their ancestors were slaves because they didn't, you know, they came from yeah. the islands. They didn't. It's not like their ancestors were American. Their ancestors mm. were, came from places like, you know, Africa and the islands where they, you know, some of them were like rich people there, you know. Well, so whatever. yeah, it's like just a completely our, different thing. our uh, black, po like if you're talking black population in Australia is really, really small. We have quite a large indigenous population, but like the indigenous issues are so different to what's going on in America. Like we absolutely fucked uh, our Aboriginal people really really recently so there's so many issues that are How real and ago? legitimate uh ah uh, fuck i'm gonna get in trouble a few only a few hundred years ago like we we had the stolen generation which was people would go into aboriginal communities take the children out and put them in with white families so those those people that, that they grew up those people are like becoming old now so it's like within a generation that it's that that we've right. really fucked that fucked like Aboriginal people, which sucks. But the the issues are nowhere near comparable to like the Black Lives Matter issue in America because, uh, I mean, firstly, America has so many Black people. Like they would just you see Black people every day in Australia, like especially in Melbourne. If you don't go to the city, you might not see a Black person for a whole week. You'll see Indians, Asians, yeah. but I was, when I went to New York and I got on a train. When we weren't and it recording, was like, you referred to that. Yeah, I was like, it was like 50 When, when we 50. weren't recording, you were, that was going to make fun of you. <laughs> no, go on, get me in trouble. Say, I was, was going to say when we weren't recording, you referred to it as paradise for some reason, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. No, um, that was, that was when I got on the train in New York, there were black people everywhere. I was like, man, paradise. This is just like all my Pornhub categories. This is amazing. <laughs> You said you wanted a different group of people to be getting on the trains. <laughs> That's a quote. I didn't say that. <laughs> I did not say that. All right. Um, no, but yeah, I think that's, I, I guess why in America it's so much more present because, you know, you, you see black people every day, you talk to them every day. You might have a black friend, whereas in, you know, Australia, especially in, unless you're in Northern territory, you know, you, a lot of people just don't have an Aboriginal friend or haven't seen an Aboriginal for a month. So it's like a lot of that shit's easier to sweep under the rug than it is in, in another place, which is a shame. Yeah, I, th I think that's the same as a lot of the woke stuff. It's kind of when they try to clump black, black, the black movement in, a lot of black dudes are like, we're not about all this other stuff. You know, mm. we're fighting for black shit. I mean, that's the guys that I know. Like, you know, they're a, being a black dude is a big part of their identity, not being like a left wing woke dude. They're like, no, I'm a yeah, black guy. That's a big part of who I am. I don't, I, I'm not here. Like, I'm not saying that you shouldn't be fighting for trans people, but this isn't that. Yeah, definitely not. The statues here is, uh, so one of the funny things here is that, uh, so basically the whole thing is they wanted to fund the police, right? So yeah. they're going to, uh, you know, the statues and then there's, they're protesting the government like nonstop outside of this house. Cause you kind of know where these people live and stuff. So because yeah. of that, they basically have, you know, 80 extra cops that would probably not be working. So they literally have like, they're, they're having their defund yeah. the police uh, uh, protests. And because of that, you have like 150 extra cops on duty. <laughs> so, so you're not defunding anything. Overtime. You're just getting them overtime, bro. You're actually yeah. refunding the police. They're refunding the police. And then the statues, it's pretty crazy. You have, you know, I, I was doing, uh, I did a few shows and I've been kind of out and about the city and there's yeah. literally, you'll see a statue and you have, you'll you'll there's statues everywhere and every statue is two police men or whatever people like mm. <laughs> just working full time that's their job now guarding this statue it's pretty crazy so that you is have... not, and but but how many like cuz i've seen a lot of statues of like legitimately racist people uh but 
surely that's not all of the statues, but it seems like it, like all of these statues that that are like genuinely good people that did amazing things. Like some guy who was a real campaigner to free slaves got torn down. I don't remember the name, but surely not all of your statues. Are George like, Washington, I think. Yeah. I think yeah, that, but that's what they're kind of saying. Like anyone who owned slaves or anyone that was you know participated in slavery. But you're like, okay, that was kind of everyone. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's if they didn't own them, they were they were working hard so that they could afford to. You know, like that was literally America. That's what it was built on. So it's like if you if you want to if the whole idea is to tear down anyone who was a part of that system you might have to kill grandma and grandpa just to get closer to killing their grandparents because everyone was in that shit. Yeah. Well, yeah, it seems like everyone is... And, uh, and like, I don't give a shit. Tear down the statues, whatever. But, like, anything else is the politicized thing where yeah. the truth is, if I... It, listen, if I was president of the United States of America and I was trying to solve this whole statue thing, I go to the... Yeah. You go to the left-wing people and you're like, listen, we, we're going to tear down... We're going to take these statues down, but we can't... We're going to move them to a museum and, yeah. you know, just like they do with all the other history things. Let's pick your top 10 statues. We'll do that. We won't make a big press thing out of it. It won't be a big public thing. They don't have to look like they lost. If anything, they can look good for allowing this. And you go to the right yeah. wing. You look, listen, this, these statues are coming down eventually. That's probably what's going to be happening. So let's yeah. we'll allow them in the mute. You guys don't have to get dummied on CNN because they're not going to be smashing them and make a big public display. But that wouldn't be a win for anyone, right? So the, yeah. they need a big, you know, tearing down of it and the smashing. And then they, so that rubs it in their face. So they don't want that. So they're like, well, we, yeah. we're going to see this as a loss if these come down. So it just becomes this fight. Yeah, because, the you right know, and the uh, then the next thing would be if they did take down the statues and move them to a museum, then, then the next thing would be, look at this fucking museum celebrating racism. That's what it would be because you would have a museum full of like Confederate statues and slave owners and the museum will be this and that. And be like, look, we need to tear it down. It's like, can't Auschwitz is a museum right now. It's like, if you want to tear right. down monuments that are about terrible things, you should be starting with Auschwitz. Like that shit is there <laughs> yeah. to, to educate people about how fucked uh, a period of our history was because the, the biggest thing you, the biggest mistake anyone could make is thinking that Nazis were not us. Like that is just humans. Like they weren't special. They weren't yeah. aliens. They didn't have something like wrong with them in their brains that made them do that. That was just a society that went down a path that we should never go down again. And, and the easiest way to go down that path again is to, is to forget how it happened. Well, you see so many people that have no idea how the Holocaust happened. They kind of think of it as, you know, they think of it in terms of, oh, look at uh, the black people, the way that there's racist. That's what happened in the Holocaust. But it was the opposite. It was it was mm. kind of this mix of you, you go, look, you see how there's like this hatred for kind of like rich white people or white men or whatever. You kind of see that on the left. And then you see how the right has this kind of hatred for immigrants coming in and taking their jobs. Imagine yeah. those immigrants coming and taking those jobs were rich white people. And they, and now they run everything. And you're like, oh, these immigrants took our jobs and now they're your landlords and now they run everything. So it's like you combine the left's hatred for fucking, you know, the 1% with the right's hatred for like people that aren't from here, identitarianly or whatever, coming yeah. and taking everything. It's like, that's the catastrophe. And it's like, both of you guys are guilty of one of those. So imagine you combine them and you, you would be on one of those sides. So it's a lot of the people is like, you can see every, both of you guys can see how you go oh look at those other people are the worst i was having this conversation yeah. with the landlord stuff because it's it, like people can only see it when it's their thing like imagine how many people on your uh you know facebook will be like you know hang the landlords or whatever right and you know all this stuff yeah. like you know kind of the bernie thing it's like we need to kill the landlords and, and you know and you're like i understand that's being hyperbolic but i go but i'm a landlord i go do you think they should kill me and you're like, no, that's it doesn't really mean that. I go, okay, so you understand when things are hyperbolic on that side, but not on the other side. And it's like, that's mm. kind of what a lot of times the comedy is or whatever it is. But you, you see that on your side and they go, I want to kill all landlords. And you know they're not being real. So everyone, the same way that the Confederate flag to them doesn't mean that. To you it does, but they don't. And you don't get to attribute motives to other people's brains, you know? Yeah, it's... it's uh... 
it's very it's very interesting to me all that confederate flag stuff so so weird i guess that's just what happens when you have a country that old like it's pretty foreign to me as an australian because we don't have like the the i think the beauty of being australian is generally we're pretty similar like there's differences state to state but like our extremes uh on on either side and and state to state are so much closer uh than extremes in in america like uh you know texas and la they're two different countries so they will never oh, yeah. agree on anything you know they're never going to 100 percent agree on anything other than if you put your hand in fire it's going to hurt they're they're i was surprised at how much it was different from canada when i moved here in that regard because yeah. there is like we don't have a Tucker Carlson in Canada that's just like a sort of proud white right wing guy. Like there's no way that that would fly where I'm from. So it's it is a it is a different place. So probably where I'm from is probably Canada's probably a little closer to Australia in a lot of ways. Yeah, it's I don't know I don't know why it is. It's like um, I don't know. There's just just something in in the freedom culture like the like the I think the a, a real big indicator of the culture is like. Um, how different America is to, to any Asian country with the mask thing. So like the masks don't protect you. They stop you from getting someone else sick. So they protect everyone around you. So it's a very right. selfless thing. So that's why, you know, China's communist. So everyone wears a mask because their whole idea is like, we are all stronger as together. Whereas America is very much like, I'm the best. I'm going to make it. And it's very individualistic. So if my mask won't protect me, there is no point wearing it because it won't help me. Fuck all these other people. It's not going to help me. It is that, which is why in a lot of ways, America is still the place that you can come and, you know, make a fortune. And if you're great, you can, yeah. you can still be the best. But then on the other side, you know, the dead, like if you're poor, like we'll just leave you on the street to fucking rot. <laughs> Yeah, because it was your fault. That's your you did you fucked up. Like I made it because yeah. I cared about me. Obviously, you didn't care about you enough. So that's why you failed and you're poor. It's um, it's a very interesting culture. It's like I mean, because I I I see myself going there and living there and working there. So uh, yeah, dude, I fuck, hope so. I I don't want to. I, I don't want to be there poor, poor there. That's basically the idea of like, I'll go there when I can afford to make no money for a year. Because if I go there and I start sliding backwards, I do not want to be broke in that city. No, it doesn't. It's not a good place to be broke. Yeah. I mean, again, though, you're the type of guy you are. You'd be perfectly suited for here because you work super yeah. hard and you work long hours and you, you're good at finding gaps where they are. And it's like, it's kind of like that idea of never enough, right? Like a lot of people I know, they yeah. find these gaps and then you just like, you find a little printing press and you go, doo, 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 you just zone in on it. It's the guy that yeah. found like one video that works and then you just make it a thousand million times as opposed to ever moving off that. Yes. And uh, not, to, not to say that you were that, but you, um, you, uh, you would be able to find the pockets of where to make money, not to say you'd wring them dry, but I think you have a, a good homing beacon for how to do that, which is what America sort of seems to be based on. Sort of fun. One of that kind of reminds me of something I was thinking about when people talk about selling out because yeah. there's a lot of, I've seen a lot of this lately where people go, this guy's selling out or this guy's selling out. I go, selling out is when you do the thing you don't want to do. Like selling out mm. for you would probably be way more that like, you know, the, you were, you know, making fun of like woke nonsense. And then the right wing kind of was like, you're our guy. And you'd be like, Ooh, I'll do that. And even though I don't really think it, I'll just be like a tr full of bone Trump guy. And you could kind of probably profit off that the same way that anyone I, could profit I, yeah, off the I other mean, way. I could have, I could have gone that road. And that to me would have been selling out. Like there was a, there was that a minute where I, I, I saw that opportunity to go that way. It was like when rebel media came to Australia and then I, I, dre I dressed up as like the leader of Antifa's um, Australia. And then I got a, I, you know, abused the host and did all this and just said what they wanted to say. And then they ran a fake story. And then I was like, ah, gotcha. I'm not Antifa. Yeah. Rebel great. media then reached out to me and was, and they were actually fucking, they, well, out of everyone I've hoaxed, crazily enough, it was the super right wing publication that took it the best. They were like, man, you got us. Well done. That was funny. You tricked us. Uh, and then they were like, Hey, would you like to make some some videos as that Antifa character for us. And I was like, Oh, that would be fun. And then I did one. And then, and then I saw all of the comments and I was like, Oh, 
oops, I just got paid to make propaganda. No, thank you. Uh, right. But yeah. I could have just kept going down that and I might be huge right now, but I would be kind of betraying what I believe in by just only supporting one side. It's like, I want to take the piss out of everything. Yeah, and that's what you because you, that's the way you actually think. It's kind of like right now on TikTok. I don't know if you see this, but there's like a resurgence of like based black guys because there's mm. there's so much room for like a black Trump guy. Like because yeah. the right can't wait to show that they're not racist, so they go, "Look, this guy thinks what I think. Go out, what now?" Right? Yeah. So it's kind of I used to always say that with the like guys who were in when I was a musician before this, there would be like a guy that was um you know playing acoustic guitar songs about chicks or whatever, some like kind of pussy ass shit. And, and people will be like, what a sellout. And I go, well, that depends if he's that guy or not. Yeah. You know, like I know a million guys that like are that kind of pussy emotion, super emotional, you know, mm. I have friends that are tons like that. They're all, and then they're always kind of like upset over a chick. Like that's just kind of how they operate. So for that guy, it would be selling out if he came out and was like, yeah, I'll just go all in on like the me, I'm a man. Yeah. <laughs> so, Depends on who you are. And I, I, I've been seeing that a lot lately where people go, oh, look at, you know, you're kind of pussing out on this opinion. And I go, well, that's what I think, though. Pussing mm. out would be saying what I don't think because I'm scared of you, <laughs> you know, like the guys. Yeah. Who was, that's what happened to a lot of those woke guys. They're just so terrified of their own audience, you know? Yeah, it's the, the sellout thing is interesting in, in the sense that, like, it's it, it, it only to me counts is if you start doing other things. So like I, a few years back, I started radio, like commercial radio. And, and I did it after criticizing radio and criticizing media and all this kind of stuff. So there was concern, which I thought was legitimate of people going, Oh no, is he going to sell out? But to me, I was like, dude, I took the piss out of mainstream media and made fun of all these people. And I still got them to pay me on the condition that they had no creative input and I could still do my online thing just as frequently without changing anything. I fucking won. That's not selling out. I yeah. won. And then, yeah, you're the you know, sh sure enough, I got to do the radio show the way that we wanted to do it and still keep going the online thing. And whenever they raised concerns about the online thing, I was like, no, you don't touch that. Remember the deal. You pay me to do radio. Uh, so I won't swear on radio. And that's all you get from yeah. me. But over here, this is my thing, you know, because I'll be real. I was making more money out of online than I was radio. So I can drop radio. You just thought that might be a, did you think it would just be a good way to grow the audience sort of, and you know, I, do I, different things to try. I love growing up. I loved radio. I really, really loved it. And that's where I saw myself going. And also I, I wanted the challenge of, can I be funny without saying fuck stuff without even swearing? Yeah. And I think that, and also it was with my friend, Luke, who's like my best friend in the world. So yeah. it was just to me, a no brainer of like, okay, cool. Get paid to essentially do a podcast. Um, Cause I didn't give a fuck about radio play or whatever. I just wanted to do a, you know, a podcast and get it out to my online fans. Uh, and then it was the challenge of being funny. And, and, and the one, the one thing I love about the mainstream is it gives you a budget and a team. Like working with, with lots of people bet, behind the scenes, great. I fucking, <laughs> I fucking love that. So that was a really cool experience for me. And then, you know, it, it, it eventually just, they, they just didn't want to do something with us. So we were like, okay, cool. This has been fun. We're going to turn the show into a podcast. You come back to us when you're ready. And now the podcast is bigger than the radio show ever was. And maybe we'll go back. Maybe we won't. Uh, it just depends on whether it makes sense or not. So for me, it was just like, fun and uh a way to become funnier uh so just did it yeah you gotta do those it is funny though that you got backlash because you're with well, your fans they'll always do that They're low key your fans want you to fail like <laughs> some of them do actually some of them everyone's do it's like even when you do something big like a little bit they're like amazing but in their head they're like now nah, we're losing track we're losing control of this guy <laughs> Yeah, there, there honestly are a lot. There, there are a lot of people that you, you see them kind of. Uh, they feel like when an artist becomes successful, they've betrayed them because, at, because I mean, there is the, like when you're small and when you have such so little people, every single person who likes your shit matters so much to you, and and they as more people come in, each person starts to matter a little bit less. You know, you can't 
read every DM anymore. You can't read and respond to every comment like you used to be able to. And, and it's, it's a shame as the person with the fans that you can't be as intimately connected as you were before, but it is just reality, reality. And fans that were there at the start, they go one of two ways. They either go, man, look how far he's come. I'm proud. I'm glad I was one of able two. to be a part of the story of the growth. And I remember when he was this piece of shit who was broke and didn't have anything. And, and I helped be, I was an integral part of the engine that got that machine running or yeah, the other they get route to say is, I liked his first album. Yeah, exactly. Or the, or the other way people go is like, man, he was better at the start and, He's fucking betrayed all the people by by blowing up and uh and and I'll now find he a new guy a that fuck. no one's heard of. Yeah. So, and I've I've when I've liked artists because I've I've been a part of so many musicians when that I've liked when they're small and they blow up. I you you either choose to be inspired by it or you become resentful of it. And thankfully, most people with me have have been super super happy with with my growth, which. I'm incredibly grateful for. Yeah, but you got a positive you know, you fan see, base. You I think see the others that aren't. Yeah, that's because of the, you know, a lot of that's because of the way you've handled it and the type of fans you've cultivated, you know? Mm. But there is, it's exact same as when you have like a relationship or a partnership or an improv troupe or a band or whatever, but you take like a couple. It's like if they were kind of started the same place, they both have jobs and you're with this girl and she becomes like super famous. I think half of dudes are kind of like, yeah, awesome. I mean, yeah, you're like the most famous person in the world. That's amazing. And then half the people are genuinely like that. I'm so proud of her. And I think yeah. that just is the type of person you are and how, you know, how insecure you are or not insecure or whatever. But I, I can see a, a little bit of myself of both. And you try to, cause sometimes you'll feel it. You'll see someone that, you know, they even is friends with you getting all this stuff and you kind of like, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you kind of have to like fight that and be like, Dar, don't, you can't be that person. You have to like squash that part of your humanity. Yeah. I mean, like now that I've been, I've been, I started in 2012, the online thing. Now I see people who I literally inspired to start surpass me online. And there's that little right. thing in your head that goes, you can't, you, I, yeah. I'm the reason you exist. You can't do better than me. That's bullshit. But you have I to know. like be like, oh well, you know that's that's amazing that you can inspire someone to not only begin but also take the things that you inspired them to do, do it better, improve on it, and go even further. Like that's your real impact of like not only am I doing well, look at all these other people that are killing it. That's fucking awesome. And you have that that other thing of you know when you really are great at you start to get great at what you do and secure in your path you know, you have your path and you know what you want to do and what's yeah. going on beside doesn't matter unless they're copying too much of you. Like yeah. there's scenarios where someone's copying you and they're not just being inspired by you. They're copying not, you know, they're copying the jokes. They're copying the way you talk. They're copying your fonts. They're copying your like promotion. Yeah. Like, and they just start literally doing a replica of you. And that can be frustrating, especially when they're getting bigger than you. And it's like, yeah. and Oh Lou, you're kind of like that guy. And you're like, no, <laughs> he's like me. Well, actually he is. He <laughs> is me actually. That's uh, and that's the problem. No, you do. You do <laughs> see that. It is funny. Like there's, <laughs> there's a lot of like open mic comedians that are, that are running around wearing like really cheap leather jackets and doing their hair like me. And it's like, ah, oh, flattering, but wear a t-shirt, bro. That shit doesn't fit you. Yeah. Don't steal the whole thing. I mean, you know, you yeah. have a certain level of, uh, you you kind of are being yourself. Like when you do your news shows, you're sort of being yourself, but there's a little, you're sort of being a character, right? And you've yeah. sort of picked your level of, cause you're sort of speaking in a broadcast tone to some degree, you know what I mean? Yeah. When you do those, as opposed to talking conversationally. And that's, yeah. you know, you have a level of that. Then you have the your level of the way that you're standing and the level of conversation versus jokes. And when someone replicates that, it's pretty obvious, but it's more obvious when they're wearing your clothes and, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and yeah. It's saying like the same the thing. Outfit. Yeah, very funny. Reviewing the same videos. And yeah, at, at some point it gets like, okay, come on. I used to have that a little bit with uh, in Toronto where someone, you know, it would be like, oh, all the comedians this are the same here. And you're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> they are not <laughs> yeah. but that's why new york's better because when you start to get popular 
uh, it doesn't matter anymore because they, you know, they're, they're not like, oh, these comedians are all the same. They go, oh, that guy's doing Ryan Long. And, you know, the, I'm sure in Australia it'd be pretty obvious to someone being like, oh, that guy's being Lou Spears. So it probably wouldn't uh, bother you mm. at that point. Yeah. So um, how so how are you how are you finding New York now? You've been there been there for a while i mean in terms of like the comedy scene how are you how are you fitting in coming in from like the, the ultimate outsider yeah when, well i honestly if really did feel like i was training with ankle whites for the last part of my life i you know i've been yeah. doing stuff i have this been in canada having a career for 12 years or however long it was and then when i came here it really felt like things were happening fast and everyone was very uh I, you know i felt a lot like I was kind of on on the pulse at the moment and then I got past at all the clubs everyone was very nice to me and wanted to have me on their shows and their podcasts and all that stuff and sharing my videos and everyone and it, there was a bit of like oh you have you checked out this new guy Ryan Long and I could kind of yeah. feel that vibe and it was very positive and then uh now that has all been uh, removed from my life yeah oh sorry you've just cut out that happen i see you i can't hear you you can't hear me eh? because i can hear myself in my headphones oh i've got you weird now. oh weird yeah sorry you just you you just um last thing i heard was I've... that's all been cut out of my life oh just because of coronavirus yeah <laughs> but i've but I, honestly, I've, I was, it was so great, man. Coming here was awesome. Like I, I've met a lot of cool friends I like. Like I found a group I liked really cool. And I had my one friend that moved here with me. So I kind yeah. of had a little crew and I've just been doing this long enough that there was, there was no, it was just, I've done, I felt like I'd done this three times before and I kind of figured it out. So it was super positive, man. I, I honestly like love this scene. I love all the people. It's very cool. And all of the like club owners liked me. So now that, even, you know, for example, all these club owners are doing like one show here and there. And, and yeah. then I'm one of the, you know, 10 people they're calling to do that. And I've only been here for a few months and I'm already kind of in that, cool. uh, on their short list of people that they're, you know, on top of mind. So it's, I'm probably pumped when it comes back. But, um, I think if just in terms of quarantine, there is positive to being in a city where I don't have my real extended group of friends or family or ch or what, all that stuff. Cause I did yeah. just put my head down and like really work hard, which is one thing we talked about a little bit, the idea that you probably, there has been parts where you're like, man, it would be nice to just have three months where everyone had to just stop doing comedy and I could just focus on this thing and yeah. get all my ducks in a line. So there was that positive aspect, but I mean, if I was to be quarantined in a city, like for example, you built your studio, you have your crew and stuff. I wasn't yeah. quite there where I had, you know, a list of people that I do film with, a list of people that mm. I do this with, a 10 sound guys on a thing. You know, if I was going to build a studio, here's a good place to lease. Here's some good people to, oh, the comedians that also do film that might be good to share with or whatever. I just yeah, wasn't yeah. quite positioned. I would have liked another six months before I got locked in a cage. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it, yeah, that's, that's very true. Like for me, I, I moved house and then it got i got locked down so it was kind of perfect because i'm like okay great now i won't get distracted with anything else all i need to do is get furniture online and fucking build the studio uh and so so it was almost like a, a blessing in disguise for me in the sense that I, I suppose the positive of it now is like when comedy comes back it's gonna be fucking huge people will be dying for it i really do think and i'm super sto stoked to like get out there and actually see fans i'm sick of like reading comments and that being the only feedback i haven't yeah. heard laughter for like months like you can do a show here and there we can't <laughs> do shows at all i haven't heard laughter for fucking since january it sucks you know the truth is the doing a show here and there almost isn't better from an efficiency standpoint like if you think of yeah. comedy sort of like training for sports and in you know these these basketball players or runners they go hey you want to just do one thing and you're like well, I don't think you understand the training that it takes for me to get into shape to do this. So it yeah. doesn't make sense for one. So to kind of go through all your stuff and, you know, put it all together, it only makes sense if you're always doing it. Otherwise, it's fun to go do yeah. it once or twice and see all your friends. And it's kind of a, a fun social thing. But in terms of 
actually building what you're trying to do, it doesn't really have a purpose other than like, oh, that's kind of fun. I can pretend I'm doing stand up again for a second. Yeah. It's like it, it almost like if you have a new bit, it would almost make you less confident because you do your new bit and it go and you get a six out of ten and you're like, whatever, I'll make it better the next time. But then you just never get next the time, next time. Month later. <laughs> yeah. So you're yeah. just sitting there with your six out of ten response and be like, maybe the idea is not good at all. Maybe I should throw it out. Sitting yeah. there alone in your house. Dude, it's funny the difference between uh, people like you two and uh, like the Americans here, the Schultzes and these people that really work hard and you see the difference. And that's one positive thing about here. Whereas in Canada, some of my boys, like, you know, some of the guys do a podcast and one of my close friends, he was like, I'm, I'm supposed to, he wants to come on my show. And I go, yeah, just get a microphone. Like you guys are doing your podcast. Just all you need is a microphone, get a sound interface. And it's been four months now. He's not working. He's getting free money from the government. And I know three different people that they've been doing their podcast with like an iPhone thing. And it's been yeah. four months of them like lounging around. And you're like, man, people are lapping. So, like you're all of your this. problems. All of your problems I would have solved in a day. Yeah. <laughs> like I've, I've, everyone I go, okay, you need a mic and interface. Okay. You need to set up like your discord or whatever. Like all of yeah. you, all of the things that you haven't done in four months, I could have put on my to-do to list for one day and got it all sorted out. I know. So it's, it's like, it's people, yeah. are, people are really, you, you see people waste. You, I think now, now that you can't perform regularly, you really see the people who are in it because they need to do it because it's their passion and love. And you see the, the other people who do it because they like being on the stage and they like yeah. feeling important. It's like those people and are sitting at home aspect. doing nothing. And the other people are like working hard and creating something elsewhere. Whereas other people are like, ah, I just kind of like getting on stage and feeling important. And then also manipulating others in a social setting. <laughs> Dude, there's, there's people that I know that are, you know, they've been, they learned how to day trade. They, uh, you know, took a course on school. They read all these books. Yeah. They start, you know what I mean? My one friend's a university yeah. professor and he's almost finished his book. And then you see other people three months in, they're like, well, now I finished Netflix and Amazon. So what, yeah. any recommendations for YouTube channel, you know, and you're just like, Jesus, dude, you're never going to have an opportunity like this. But there was a part of me that I think now I feel like I've, I'm, I've gotten all of my new things that I added to my life, whether that be from a video yeah. side. Yes. From, Cause you probably do that. You'll add like a new, let's say yeah. you, your life, you're like, okay, I can handle this. Maybe I'll do another podcast or I'll, I'll you know, I just saw yeah. you added your cooking series, right? You're like, okay, I'm going to yeah. add one other thing to the mix and then it's messy for a bit. And then you kind of get that ironed out. So then your yeah. life, you can fit that in. You're, uh, I feel like I'm at the point now where I'm like, okay, I actually, I got all these new things sorted out that I wanted to add in quarantine. And it's like, now I'd like to add stand up back in that mix. I know. Yeah. I think, I, it, yeah, you're totally right. In terms of adding in new things and folding in new shit and routines and stuff, I'm like, I'm done. And, and there is a huge gap for stand up. And I know that I shouldn't add anything else in because the moment I add something else in and that runs smoothly, if I put stand up on top of it, something's going to fucking explode. So now I'm just yeah. sitting here with like all this extra free time. And I'm like, I guess, I guess I'll read. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> yeah. Cause then you're like, well, I guess I'll do another thing, but you, there is a part of you that's like, well, don't fill up all your time because you do have to yeah. have a, a, a thing that's going to be sustainable for when, you know, when life does go back to normal. Mm. So I've been kind of adding videos and doing, you know, trying to do things that are going to, I've been more focused on trying to add things that are going to make my other processes work better. You know, like building yeah. a studio would be perfect. I figured out all my discord and stuff. I just got a new computer that I'm, uh, a lot of things that are going to streamline my process, but are taking time. So that maybe it's a good time for those kind of operations. Oh yeah. I mean, that's all the shit that you, that you neglect because you know, when you're, especially if you're like on tour flying around, everything is just survival. It's like, as long as I get to this city on time and do the show and I get a video out there, that's the only thing that matters. So like figuring out how to do it faster or better is, is almost a waste of time because that would get in the way of, of getting to the thing that must be done or you'll get uh, fucked, you know? So now's yeah, the I, perfect yeah. time to streamline everything and add new processes and, and all that kind of shit. I have such a, uh, a bad 
habit, so to speak, where it's like I need to overcomplicate things. And I think I've gotten better yeah. at realizing I'm doing it. But in this, in the quarantine, a perfect example that I realized, and I was like, stop it. Because I had, um, I've been doing these videos, which is just me talking to camera, sitting in a chair. And they've been yeah. very, like, six, more successful than a lot of the other things I've done. Like, they all do, like, half a million views across platforms. And I go, yeah. and literally... I, I was I was four in and I was writing another one. I go, you know what I should do is rent like a board. Let's do a sketch about like CNN. And I was like, I'll get six people and I'll rent a newsroom. And I started uh, yeah, uh, looking up how to rent do newsroom. that. Never do that. I know. And I go for and then I literally I, I was messaging people and I go, I message some of my you know friends that are more successful here. And I'm like, hey, would you want to do this sketch I'm thinking about? And then I was realizing that she goes i can't do this day but i can do this day and i go yeah. what am i doing stop yeah. it stop this you had this figured out you've been doing all sorts of videos you have a series that's killing if it is you standing in front of your camera and uh you know yeah. utilizing your editing and your right and your skills or whatever and i'm looking at how i can complicate this and i go stupid 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 well it is dumb like people don't want tv that's they're on the internet if they want a tv they go on netflix or amazon on. that's such a problem that i fell into a few years ago and it killed my fucking channel of having this perfectionist mindset of like oh if i want to do a sketch and it has a woman in it i need to find a female actor and get her on it's like dude you go on tiktok if somebody writes a sketch about a mum, they don't hire a 50 year old actor they put a fucking towel on their head and it's yeah. funnier it's better you don't need like I know. The, what I'm trying to say is never hire a woman if you if that wasn't clear. <laughs> never give an opportunity to a woman. That's what I meant by that. <laughs> That's what the kids in the hall are. This big TV show from Canada, and yeah. uh, they were pretty big in America too. But they they only had uh, women characters that they played, so that was like the gist. Like they played every character in the show. But it was yeah. like, yeah, I don't think you'd be able to. <laughs> I don't think you'd be able to. They'd be able to pull that puppy off right now. I mean, that's, that's how I'm acting so started, isn't it? That. that was Shakespeare. If you were a female character, it was played by a man. <laughs> it's it's the it's the woman that's like having a birthday party, and you're like, yeah, we'll all go to the park, and she's like, or what if we all go to Bahamas and we'll do this? And you're just like, yeah. just stop. The thing is, everyone hanging out, everyone's yeah. busy. Stop overcomplicating things in your life. Stop. You know, it's the guys that have the five girls on the run, all that stuff. It's all yeah. just overcomplicating your life, and. I guess, especially me working in television for so long and making TV shows, and th mm -hmm. that is part of it. This, you know, people talk about production value, and it's like, well, that only matters if you're picking things that need huge production value and playing in that arena. You know, make them yeah. play in your ball court. Comedy doesn't need it. Like videos. shit being shit being bad is is almost always funnier. Like the news shows yeah. having high production, the daily talk shows. I understand that because that is the format. There is it doesn't work without that when you take it away clearly is evidenced by all their youtube clips but like if you're doing a sketch show like costumes don't have to be amazing like there are so many television shows in australia on like abc and stuff that they're shot amazing the makeup's beautiful it looks incredible and it fucking sucks because it's not so funny. many oh there's so much of that yeah it's not hard to make your your small production value it's like when the bands used to make music videos and they'd be like let's do like a party scene and it was like well you're gonna be a crappy version of the hundred thousand dollar party videos yeah. what you should do is you know pick a concept you know have two people in like a padded room or something that you can rent that for a thousand dollars and now we're you know and you yeah. can shoot that you can play you can make a really good that video but if you're like hey let's do a video where we're uh, having this huge crazy huge crazy house party you're going to be competing in an arena where they're demoing you and that's for everything. So I think yeah. that's one thing that in this quarantine, I've been able to like get a hold of myself because those things are even yeah. harder than they would be. Whereas before mm -hmm. I probably would have been, it would have, I would have been already at the shoot and have people complaining and being like, when's lunch? And I'd be like, Oh yeah, I shouldn't have done this. Whereas now the extra little hardness yeah. is me. <laughs> has forced me to like well yeah now you don't want actors because thing. if you have actors over to your house you might get covid and die so <laughs> just wear a you, towel yeah. um, i know wear a towel in your sketch when you're playing a brown dude always towel on the head <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about that um so i have uh we're coming up to the end here ryan um but what i what i do every every podcast is i have um listeners email in life advice questions and uh we just oh, nice. uh, walk 
walk through it. Sometimes they're disgusting. Sometimes they're completely obvious. I have one that I thought you'd be able to help out with. Um, How do I smash guy, with Liz here? Yes. Basically, it basically really is a lot of, uh, I like a girl. Should I tell her? Yes, idiot. <laughs> Um, but I have this one in from Mason. Uh, the, the subject line intrigued me. Uh, I have the hots for my girlfriend's best friend. Now this is juicy. Um, this is my so, best friend's girl. <laughs> uh, so I think and I'm I getting feelings. I think I'm getting feelings for my girlfriend's close friend. My girlfriend and I have been together for two and a half years, but in that time I haven't had a whole lot to do with her friends. Good. Girlfriend's friends are always annoying. Um, except for general conversation at parties with the few of them uh, that actually like me. Over the isolation period, this one particular friend of hers and I have been getting closer and closer. It started out just reacting to memes that we would share on Instagram stories, etc. cetera. Uh, yeah, that's the danger zone. If you're like doing that swipe up reaction yeah. to an Instagram story, they want to fuck you. Yeah, I mean, the problem with that one clearly is you you shouldn't have done that in the first place. I mean, it's one of the, yeah. I, I always kind of argue that with girls. Like if I had a girl and she was, it was my friend and she was like kind of going back and forth. It's like, I mean, you don't want to have that argument, but it's like, don't do that. That's not, that's not like kosher. Right. So there is yeah. a level of, in my opinion, you already sort of crossed the line of what you should have done. Uh, that's true. That is, a, would, that is a weird one where like it, as the boyfriend, you're out of line for saying, don't do that. But, but as the, the partner, you're also out of line for doing that. So it's like the, that 100%. one's like this cold war of like, I don't want to be a controlling psycho, but you should also shouldn't be doing that. Yeah. So you just don't want to be, you know, I've been with girls that are like, Oh, I just have nine guy friends. That's, that's, that's what it is. And you're just like, oh, really? Okay. Well, yeah. Why don't I just not do this? I mean, you're not the only girl in the world. So you just, I mean, ideally you don't get in a situation like that if someone's kind of like that, but the idea of like developing like a, a close friendship with your girl's friend, I think you have to like avoid doing that. You gotta, you gotta have yes. treat them. You gotta treat your friend, your girl's friends a little bit like they're your grandparents. You gotta put them on a little bit of a uh, coworker treatment. So you shouldn't develop that relationship. If you have, I mean, then you're already in too deep. I think at that point, if you're going to be that dude, break up with your girl and go for it. If you're going to be that dude, but if you want to like have integrity, well, it I goes think on, it is... goes on. Uh, he, he goes on. This is slowly built into a, into solid conversation. And, uh, I've come to realize we have quite a lot in common with each other. It's all come to a head. In like the our, last like I, so. we both did my, my girlfriend is she's your best friend. Yeah. There's so much in common. <laughs> we both like Stacy a lot. Uh, it's all come to a head in the last week or so when I've caught myself more than once absent-mindedly staring at a selfie of hers on Snapchat. Nothing sexual at all. I just find her really attractive and am feeling an impulse to start conversations with her regularly. Yeah, if you're sitting there like, like a, a fucking scene of a crime film, <laughs> just staring killer. at a photo, not messaging the woman, maybe you don't want to fuck her. Maybe you want to bury her. And that's a problem. <laughs> yeah, this guy sounds wild. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's definitely not a good image. You walked in on that. You just yeah. staring at your shrine that you've made of her best friend. And you're just like, I just want to get to know your friends. I mean, dude, if I was dating a chick and she yeah. was like, yeah, I was just chatting with your, uh, I was chatting with Chris the other day for about an hour and I go, excuse me. <laughs> yeah, that's not all, is it? That. No. And also um, the friend, if I, if my friend, I go, if my, one of my buddies was like, yeah, I was just uh, talking to your girl on Instagram the other day. I go, what, what are you doing? What is this? What's wrong with you? Scumbag. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah, it's like, so, look, I mean, everyone, you don't need, you don't need her to be your friend. You know, she has friends. You have friends. I'm your friend. What's wrong with messaging me? <laughs> uh, what am I doing yeah. wrong? No, uh, so he this, says, this uh, obviously, I, I don't want to, I don't want to let this get in the way of my relationship because I genuinely love my girlfriend, but I'm stuck on how to squash these feelings. Please help. Um, from Mason. Yeah. I mean, that's a hard I, one oh. because if you genuinely like this other girl and she is your girlfriend's friend, it's not like you'll never like the, my answer would be, Oh, just don't see her again. But that's obviously impossible. I know. That's why it's a mess. I think that, um, I mean, it sounds like you've been here with two and a half years, but 
obviously the probably right answer was uh, to break up and leave both and just be like, let me get away from this whole scenario. Because yeah, that's, no, that's the other thing. Probably it's gonna like, do that. If you break up with the girlfriend and then fuck her friend, that's that's worse than... Yeah, do then, a big maneuver. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Depends how old you are too. If you're 21, that's a, well, that's a good question. How old is this person? He doesn't say, but if it's my fans, I would say like 18, 24 between that age because if so you're young. if you're 19 if you're 19 you could legitimately say break up with this chick then go fuck a friend in six months and who gives a shit but if you're like 35 you know what i mean yeah. it'd be like scumbag move so i yeah. do think there's a big age component because you know when girls are 20 their friends aren't that important they're gonna change their friend group a lot when you're 20 you're allowed to be a bit more of a dick because you know whatever who cares none of it really matters yeah. So that is a factor. I think I'm going to go back on my uh, old my old advice a little bit if you're like 19 years old. Okay, so great. <laughs> so if you're 19 to 21, uh, be a horrible Who person, a burn it all down and dance on the ashes. <laughs> Let's have fun. Yeah. We'll move on. You're growing. It's all right. You can apologize on Twitter about it later. If you're 35, <laughs> yeah. sir, listen to another podcast. You're too old for the show. <laughs> yeah yeah if you're 19 fuck your friend rock and roll <laughs> yeah i think yeah i think that uh my serious advice is uh it sounds like look if you're doing this you don't like the person you're with it it's it's only co it probably is only a coincidence that you've started liking her friend it would have ha happened with some other bitch you were started working with or, or whatever i think that sounds like you don't really love your girlfriend if you're like like fawning over other women. So maybe you need to get out of that relationship. Fuck this other chick off. The well, minute you break you up with your girlfriend. Her. Yeah, exactly. The minute you break up with your girlfriend, you'll stop seeing her friends unless she has awful friends. So I would say, sounds like you don't like her, man. Um, and if you think you do, maybe have another thing because you're staring at photos of her friends. <laughs> yeah, I think if you break up with the girl and then leave it like a year, and then you ended up like bumping into the friend that could be yeah. like a not sketchy way to do it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. 365 days though, then burn it all down. Let's go. <laughs> but yeah, the, that's a, all of those problems are kind of proactive problems. It's like the guys that are on Jerry Springer, like, okay, so my problem is I'm i uh, I'm fucking uh, two sisters and neither of them know. What are your advice? Like, I mean, get a time machine and like, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, maybe kill yourself because I think you've made the bed and you're going to have to fucking lay in it. So it's over for you. Yeah. You yeah. kind of already did the thing. <laughs> Uh, all right, man. I think we're going to, we're going to end it there. Thank you very much, Ryan, for joining me. If you want to check out Ryan Long, definitely check out his podcast, the boys cast and his YouTube channel and his Instagram as well is popping, making some really funny, funny shit, really, really funny man on the street stuff. I see you fucking with like ignorant Americans every day. And it makes me jealous. I see it and I go, fuck, I want to <laughs> be, I want to be pestering people. You can't really do that in Australia. They don't have time for it. But in New York, if yeah. you walk up to them and you're like, Hey, I've got a microphone. They go, I'm going to be on TV. I'll say something dumb. It makes me jealous. So check out Ryan's stuff. And the more, brilliant. the more sure people are of their beliefs, the more you can trick them. Yes, absolutely. Americans are very sure of themselves because they're, yeah. you know, in their mind, the the especially like the super kind of you know liberal college crowd, like they couldn't fathom that anyone doesn't think the way they think. So they're they're they have their guard way down. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Especially if like a younger looking guy comes up to them and be like, "Oh, this guy has tattoos. He agrees with everything exactly. that I say." Because anyone who doesn't <laughs> doesn't tell me they do because they know that'll be the end of them. So let's go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. all right bro what, what so, have you been what have you been working on what do you want the people to check out before we end um check out my the boys cast with ryan long but uh, more importantly check out uh add me youtube.com slash ryan long comedy and twitter ryan long comedy instagram tiktok ryan long comedy and every monday i release a new video so i got a pretty fun one coming out this uh this week and actually i'll tell you the concept it's um two guys uh, a never trump and an always trump and they live in a house together that's good <laughs> so, i like that that's very funny and yeah they, cool. they figured out that they used to have an idea i used to have an identity and i used to be into stuff but now mainly i just don't like trump <laughs> <laughs> that, those people are so funny they're always both those people are always yelling at their phone in a car saying the opposite thing 
Yeah, they're both. Yeah, they're exactly. They're doing the same thing. It's kind of like when people are like, oh, those idiot, the, the, the people here that are like those friggin' idiots in Virginia, whatever they, they Trump guys. And you go, they're saying the exact same thing right now at their dinner table <laughs> about <Yes>. you. <laughs> so you guys are both doing this the same thing on the same end of these coins or whatever, whatever the expression is. I'm tired, Lou. I don't know what to tell you. Right. Well, we'll end it there. Thank you very much, mate. Appreciate it. Definitely check out Ryan's stuff and I'll talk to you guys very soon. Have a shit one. You're the man, dude. Cool. Thank you. Really good, man. That was great. Thank you for coming on. Yeah, you're the best, dude. Okay, can, can you t turn your camera around? Let me see that. Let me see the studio, what it looks like. Or is that a big